Right to buy is another scheme that help tenants that are currently in council housing buy their property at a discount. And this can be a very large discount. So let's understand how right to buy works and how to be eligible. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to let you know that I was actually involved in a discussion with the amazing Dan and Rachel from their YouTube channel, The Dandy Dan. Both of these two work for the NHS and we had an entire hour long special of discussing how the NHS pension works and it was really, really interesting. So I'll put a link in the description box down below and here if I can <laughs> uh, for you to check that out. So please do head over to their channel, show some love, subscribe, like and share it all around. And one last time, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Dan and Rachel for making me feel so welcome. So uh, yeah, do check them out and yeah, we'll continue with the show. Introduced by Margaret Thatcher in 1980, this government scheme allowed council tenants the right to buy their council housing at a discount. Under the current scheme, the maximum discount that you can get is either 70% off the market value of your property, or if you're living in London, you can get a maximum discount of £112,800. If you're living elsewhere in England, that is £84,600. This cap does rise year on year to account for inflation, so be sure to check the government website for the latest info. The amount of discount that you do get is determined by how many years you have been a council tenant, the type of property that you are living in, and the market value of your property as well. And I'll touch on more detail on this a little bit later on in the video. So who is eligible for this right to buy scheme? Under the current criteria, you have to be, of course, a council tenant. However, there is one small caveat to this. If the property in question was previously owned by the council, but was sold to another landlord whilst you were living in it, you may still be eligible. This is something called preserved right to buy. So if you think this applies to you, be sure to check with your current landlord to see if you are still eligible for right to buy. The property has to be your only and main home, and it has to be a self-contained household, which means you are not sharing any rooms with members outside of your household. You are a secure tenant, which means you have a legal contract between yourself and your landlord, and you need to have been living in council housing for at least three years. These three years don't have to be continuous, it can be on and off, but you would have at least needed to live in that property for 12 months before applying for right to buy. Also, you cannot have any legal issues when it comes to debt. For example, you cannot have possession orders that require you to leave your property, or you cannot have understarge bankruptcy or a petition for bankruptcy as well. You can also make joint applications. You don't have to go this on your own. People that you can do a joint application with is either other members of your household, so they have to be within the legal contract between yourself and your landlord, a spouse or civil partner, or up to three family members that have been living with you for the last 12 months, but are not necessarily on the tenancy agreement between yourself and the landlord. This scheme is fully available in England and there is a version of this scheme available in Northern Ireland as well. However, the discount that you get is considerably less. It can only go up to £24,000. Unfortunately for Scotland and Wales, right to buy is no longer available. And for the purposes of this video, I will be focusing my attention on the England version. However, if you do have any questions regarding Northern Ireland, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will be sure to get back to you. So let's determine how much the discount is. As I alluded to earlier, the discount is dependent on how long you have been a council tenant, the type of property that you'll be living in, and the value of your property as well. If your property type is a house and you have been living there within three years, you will be eligible for a 35% discount on the value of your property. After five years, this discount does rise by 1% every year until it reaches the cap of 70% or if you have reached the price cap of £84,600 if you're living outside of London in England or £112,300 if you are buying within London. So taking a small example, say you have been a council tenant for 10 years and the council house that you're looking to buy is valued at £200,000. You will be given a discount of 40% which will give you the right to buy your property at £120,000. So you will be saving £80,000 thanks to right to buy. For those that live in a flat, the numbers are slightly different. After three years, the initial discount that you do get from right to buy is now 50% rather than 35% 
if you were living in a house. After five years, this discount does increase by 2% year on year. And again, the same cap supply. So this will stop at 70% or the price caps if you are living in London or elsewhere in England. So using the example I mentioned earlier, you have been a council tenant for 10 years and you're looking to buy your council flat, which is valued at 200,000 pounds. Now this is where the different caps come into play. So you may be thinking that you are eligible for a 60% discount off your property, which will be a saving of 120,000 pounds. However, this 60% discount, although it's below the 70% threshold, it surpasses both the London and rest of the England threshold of 112,300 pounds and 84,000. 600 pounds. So if you are living in London, the 112,000 pound value will be the maximum discount that you can get. If you're living outside of London, this will be the 84,000 pound number. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe with the notification bell on. I release a video every single week talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. Now, there are some caveats that you do need to be aware of. Of course, what is a government scheme without a few caveats? So the first one being is that you may not be eligible for the full discount if your landlord has spent some significant money on maintaining the property. Um, and also if the amount that they've spent on maintaining this property surpasses the market value of the property, then you won't be entitled to any discount whatsoever. And secondly, if you use right to buy to purchase your property and you sell it within the first five years, you will have to pay some or all of the discount that you were given. I'll put a breakdown here of how that looks like year on year. Also, if you are selling it within the first 10 years, the first people that you have to offer the property to will have to be your old landlord or another social housing association. If either of these bodies want to buy your property, you will then have to sell it to them at the agreed price that you decide between you and the landlord. If you cannot agree, you can bring in a third party valuer who will then come in, value your house, and then set the price that you must sell to the landlord or the social housing association. The landlord has up to eight weeks to respond to your initial offer. If you don't hear anything from them from the first eight weeks, then you can sell your property to anyone on the market. So the process of actually getting your property through Right to Buy can be a lengthy one. You first have to fill in a Right to Buy application form, also known as the RTB1 notice, which you will then have to send to your landlord. They then have to respond to you with a yes or no answer within the first four weeks of receiving your application. This is eight weeks if you have only been a tenant of theirs for less than three years. If the landlord does come back and say no, they do have to provide an explanation and this explanation can be disputed if you do have the grounds to do so. If the landlord does agree, they then have a bit more time to come back and give you an offer. This is eight weeks if the property is a freehold, 12 weeks if this is a leasehold property. You then have 12 weeks to go back to your landlord to either agree or disagree with the offer that they've given you. If you do disagree with their offer, you will have to provide them with an explanation. In particular, if you believe their offer is above the market value of the property, you must request an independent valuation within the first 12 weeks of getting the offer. So once you've gotten the agreement to buy the property from your landlord, you then have to worry about how to finance this purchase. So unless you've got enough money lying around that you can buy the property outright, it's most likely that you will have to get a mortgage. Now the process of getting this mortgage will be the same as someone who is buying a property um, outside of the right to buy scheme. As you may know, lenders do have a criteria when it comes to giving out money for a mortgage. Uh, the criteria that they tend to look at are the deposit that you have, the income that you get and your outgoings, um, the amount of money that you're looking to borrow, your credit history, if you have any financial dependence, etc, etc. Please do remember that getting a mortgage is a huge financial financial commitment. So it's really important to consider all the costs when it comes to buying the house, but not only that, the cost when it comes to actually owning the house. So the period afterwards, there are things like maintenance and repairs that maybe your landlord used to look after is now down to you. Now for the process of buying a house, many people think it is just a deposit that you need to worry about. However, there are many other costs that you need to consider. I did a video earlier on this where I walk you through how to guesstimate the true cost of buying your house. I'll put a link in the description box down below and I'll put a link to the calculator as well. Some other things to consider is that if you are buying a flat rather than a house, you are likely to become a leaseholder, which will mean that you will have to pay a service charge to the housing association. This will be a charge on top of your mortgage repayments and other bills that you get when you own a house. And lastly, you will no longer be eligible for housing benefit if you were claiming it previously once you become a homeowner. 
Cool, so that is the right to buy process explained. Um, please do let me know in the comment section down below what your experience has been like if you are someone that has used right to buy or in the process of actually doing it. Or if you have any further questions, please do let me know and I'll be sure to get back to you. And as always, if you did find this video really useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button that does wonders for the growth of my YouTube channel. And remember, I release a video every single week. So if you wanna keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later, bye.